We've got our FL5 Civic Type R back on the dyno. It's time to test the new Aventuri. So the current spec of the car today, we've got the standard airbox back in place for the first few runs, dream intercooler, and we're paired with a Miltech exhaust. We've got no remap on the car today either, so it gets a few baselines done and we'll see what power figures we're producing. Baseline numbers are in now, so we'll get the inventory fitted and we'll repeat the process again. We've just finished testing on the first Eventuri prototype for the FL5 Civic. The results are looking extremely promising, but before we get to those, we've got a second car around today, so we're going to get that car loaded up onto the dyno, repeat the whole process again, stock airbox, get a few runs in, baselines, and then from there we'll fit the Eventuri and see what overall difference we would have seen. As expected, we had some consistent results yet again with this FL5. We're gonna go and have a look at some of the data now, look at the peak horsepower, torque, and air intake temperatures. So, Phil's finished testing the intake on the FL5. We did uh, runs with the stock system, did them consecutively to get a nice regular number, and then we swapped it over, left the car on the dyno to reduce the variability, put the intake in, repeat the same process to keep the variable to a minimum, and I'm pleased to say that we have some very good results. So looking at the dyno numbers, you've got the two stock lines, which we were the most repeatable sort of average runs versus the two lines we've selected from the Venturi. Again, they were the average out of all the runs that were taken. And you can see that there's a decent peak gain of around 12 to 14 horsepower. But more importantly is that the gain is across the entire RPM range. It's not just the peak. You do see sometimes there's a gain, but it's literally just at the peak. So when you're driving the car, it doesn't feel like it's anything different because it's just at the end. Whereas with this intake, you're seeing that gain throughout the entire RPM, not just in horsepower, but in torque. And importantly, in the mid range, we've got instances where it's approaching 20 foot pounds of torque. And you will feel that in the car. You'll feel that in terms of how it pulls, how the car feels with the throttle response, it should be much sharper, it should be much more instant, and generally the car will feel more aggressive, more eager to pull to the red line. 
So that's a, a really good result because the intake is flowing much more than stock and you're getting a nice consistent gain throughout the entire rev range. So although the engines between the FL5 and the FK8 are very similar, the actual airboxes are different. And one of the reasons is because there's more space in the FL5 engine bay. When I was designing the system, I overlaid the scans of the FL5 and the FK8. I dropped the FK8 airbox in there and found there was a lot more space that I could use. So as a result of that, the FL5 airbox has much more depth between the front where the bumper is and the firewall at the back of the engine. When, when you see the carbon airbox, you'll see in comparison to the FK8, it's much bigger. The opening as well on top where it seals to the underside of the hood is a lot larger as well. And a consequence of that is on the FL5, we actually didn't have to use the secondary scoop, which we used in the FK8, because there's less restriction where the air is being fed from in the FL5. So that's the main differences between those two intakes. Now, the other thing we've also done is revised the actual turbo tube, the carbon turbo tube, which goes from the airbox all the way around and down to the turbo. And what we've managed to do is actually increase the volume of that tube in comparison to the one we made previously for the FK2 and FK8. We've kept the diameter the same to the actual MAF tube so that it's retrofitable, but as soon as it moves from the MAF tube, we've increased that diameter vertically so the volume is much bigger and that volume stays larger as far as possible around the top. You'll see the difference. And then it actually swoops down with a more gradual bend radius to give that extra volume around to the turbo. Phil's gonna test that next with the stock air box and then again with the turbo tube and our intake to show the impact that extra volume has on the overall performance. One thing to point out also is this new FL5 turbo tube will also fit the FK8 and the FK2. So if you've already got one of our turbo tubes on your FK8 or FK2, this new one will give you even more power increase. Thanks for watching and hope you've enjoyed getting an exclusive look at the new Eventuri intake. We're pleased to be working with some of the industry leading manufacturers and we've got many more intakes to bring you. We've got a few more intakes to test next week, all varying different price levels. So we'll be interested to see, are they all gonna perform just as well? If you haven't already, give the video a like, leave us a comment below and make sure you hit the subscribe.